still seen them by the side of the road. These unkept, smudged, hopeless people holding cardboard signs. Sometimes they have props, baby stroller, a pet, gasoline can, something to lend credence to the thin fiction that they need money for something other than booze. It was, um, it was a man with a need gas sign with the red gas can on the ground that I saw when I drove into Salem six unlucky years ago today. I tried to ignore him, not making eye contact, but I was stuck at a red light and pretending he wasn't there was getting really awkward. So I reached into my pocket and pulled out two dollars, rolling down my window just a crack. Here you go, buddy. I pushed the money through the, the opening of the window. That was when, for the first time, I really looked at his face, or what was left of his face. It was a single eyeball just looking back at me, bulging out of a charred skull. I was absolutely frozen in terror until the blackened shape of uncovered finger bones reached out to take the money. And that's when I let it fall to the ground and slammed on the accelerator. I didn't even care that the light was red. In the time since then, I've picked up pieces of the legend. A shell-shocked war veteran, unemployable and alcoholic, became a familiar sight in Salem, begging by the roadside. Citizens stopped giving him money, thinking he would just move on to a bigger city. He responded by creating one of the most traumatic spectacles in town history, setting himself alight in the middle of town during evening rush hour. Ever since that roadside encounter, I've been seeing little wisps of flame out of the corner of my eye, like brief flashes that are gone as soon as I turn my head, sending nauseated chills through my whole body. Is this tormented spirit following me now? Whether he intends it as a blessing or a curse, I just want to be as far as possible from this horrifying specter. hospitals. One place torture is considered for your own good. If their experiments ever succeed in restoring a person's sanity, they better hope it was at the expense of the person's memory. Ready? Relax, we're out of the graveyard. And into crazy town? A big improvement. People who see things nobody else can see end up living here. Not that crazy. Come on. Okay. I'll help you get inside, but... But what? Look, if we're gonna ask this girl Iris about this contract, the asking needs to be done by a living person, right? Just remember who opens the door for you, tough guy. Yeah, yeah. All right, kid, you're up. I just find a way to get Iris's room number. Um, hi. I need your help. I'm looking for a friend. Visiting hours are over. Right, but, but she was with the cops. Then go talk to the cops. See, I, I did, and, and they said that she was a danger to herself, and... I can't help you. All right. Just need to stall her, okay? We have to figure out what her weaknesses are. Maybe these things on her desk will help us. He 
He is most likely a man of imposing size and stature. Someone who's accustomed to violence. Heinous acts in his past define him to the point where he no longer knows who he truly is. She has left. Sorry. I know how hard it can be when someone depends on you. What's your friend's name? Iris. Uh, Iris Campbell. Yes. It looks like your friend Iris is here. Everything's gonna be okay. Thanks. I, I feel better. Hold oh, tight, kid. I got this. Just need to get my eyes on her computer screen. Two sixteen. We gotta find it quick, Joy. She's scheduled for electroshock. All right, kid. Coast is clear. is due for shock therapy in 15 minutes. Oh shit. Oh shit is right. Let's get moving. Another camera. Get on it. The thing to understand about Mrs. Gwynn is that her father used to become violently angry when she would walk in front of the TV during the school.
go away. You're up again, kid. I need to possess you to get past this crap. Nope. Oh, I hate that. Or you can just go on. Totally alone in here. Oh, fine. You know what these hands are? Lost souls, I guess. Just seems like the opposite of moving on. Or at least the opposite of moving on you're trying to do. <laughs> Get to Iris' room. No, no. We stick together. Joy, we don't have a choice. Now, I'll meet you there as soon as I figure out a way around this. Go! Go! 